You have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Now we have the scripture reading. Text is taken from Philippians chapter 1, reading from verses 27 to 29. Let's read together. Philippians chapter 1, reading from 27. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. This is the word of the Lord. Let us also turn to Ephesians chapter 4. I just write to read about two verse, three verses from there. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. There is one body <clears throat> and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, as we come to your word, your word is life. Help us, Lord, to not only hear your words, to not only think about your words, but also live out your word. Help us. We thank you. And may the Holy Spirit be with us, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to see you again, and uh, it's good to see a lot more of you today. Again, Although some of you looks a bit uh, bigger than before. Uh, Gabriel is definitely looking bigger than before. <laughs> Don't laugh, Gabriel. <laughs> You know, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 to 29 was one of the passages that I shared with all of you in my time here almost every year. For those who are new, uh, well, you may, this may be the first time you hear. Why is it that I have to share so much about this passage? Because the church must see themselves as one. We must not have too many, in fact, we should not have sectorian spirit or split into sectors, groups in the church. You know, I know we have different type of football fans here. Uh, only, one, only, the, only one type is correct. But the thing is this, that must not separate us. What is important? What must we do? Last week I spoke about our call. The call of the saints. What we must do is to bring the gospel to the outside world, to the unsaved who are panicking. And how are we going to do that if it is just by words? If it's just by words, it's a waste of time. Nobody wants to hear. Because people will look at us. People will look at you, people will look at me and ask, what's so different? And many people, when they come into the church, 
The one thing, they, the last thing they want to see is church members fighting with one another, gossiping, and slandering, sort of saying bad things behind other people's back. If they come into the church and see it different, and they ask the question, why are you guys so different? When the world is fighting one another, you are loving one another, and that's what I want, because I want people to love me. I don't want people to fight with me. I can have that at my office. I can have that at my workplace. I can have that at home. So, as we read Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 to 29, I took directly from the passage and put it as the sermon title, In One Spirit. Literally in every sense of the word. Because this is in the one Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body. It's not like you had a different spirit. It's not like you have something else different. Yafuman and me are dressed in white. And Reverend Tang have a funny collar around his neck. Does it make us all different? No, we are all same. We are one body. We have to do different duties, that's all. Right? So, in one spirit, what should we be doing? In verse 27, it says, In one spirit, we stand firm. What are we standing firm for? We're standing firm for the gospel. And what is the gospel, I ask you, my brothers, my sisters? What is the gospel to you? Yes, you can say, the gospel is the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah, but do you break it down? What is the good news? Scratch your head. Good news. Chinese. How see how see? What what is it? What is it? Okay, okay. Ah, it's it's the salvation. I'm saved. My sins are washed away. Very happy, right? Of course, my sins are washed away. I'm no more being condemned. I'm very happy. What else? If that is it, then why do I come to church? Because with the sins been washed away, been baptized into one body, it makes the difference when you and me, we become one family. You call ourselves brothers and sisters. We don't call ourselves just friends. You know, in our, one of the young ladies from, the, from China, theological student, that came to our prayer meetings back at Church of True Light, where I is in Mandarin, and whenever she's going to say, I'm so happy that I'm with family members. You know, at first, people are not used to it. But you see, are we not families, family members of one another? If one hurts, shouldn't the rest of us hurt? Why? Because we don't treat them differently now. We treat them as part of us. It's a very difficult thing to do, you know, in our Asian context, especially in Singapore. We are, in our language, the way we talk, we discriminate. In America, you're either white, black, or brown, and I heard there's yellow, there are other shades. Then we want to talk about a lot of other things. Then you say there is such thing as a black church. <laughs> the white church. Why all this? The high and mighty church. The true Jesus church. The truer Jesus church. The truest Jesus church. It's a sad thing, you know. Okay, let's not talk about outside of this place. Let's talk within this place. Do you often change seat to sit with somebody else? Maybe sit with somebody that you don't like? Or don't know? Have you learned to attempt to go and see and know the names of one another? You know, some of you, I had to ask your name again. Forgive me. I'm getting a bit... Uh, <clears throat> 
advanced in age, which I was duly reminded by the government because they sent me a card that allows me to cross the road with a little bit more time. <laughs> so I go and disturb drivers. I press, I think, I keep, I walk away. <laughs> nah, I didn't do the such things. But we stand firm as one family. As we see in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 46, we are baptized in one family because we all have only one God. You do not have many gods. We don't have. We only have one God. One Father of all. One Father in heaven. That's all. It's not about me. It's about us. So, one family. Brothers and sisters, I encourage us to get to know. I'm not going to ask Ping Lam whether he knows the person on the right. If he doesn't know, we're going to knock his head, Ray. That's your daughter, right? <laughs> but now look left and right, in front and back. Do you know, in your north, south, east, west from your position, do you know all of them? If you don't, then make it a point to know them. Once upon a time, when I was a lot younger, when I just graduated from theological college, I worked in a very big church, not telling you where, but near Capitol. Big church. A very good church. But as a new young parish worker there, nobody knows me. I go to one of their services. I was serving in another services, in another service, not services, another service, but I went to this next service, and then, they have the peace. And so everybody, peace with you, peace with you. I make sure I recognize a few of them. And then after that, after the service, we go out breakfast. And I deliberately walk near to that few people that I have just shaken hand with. I walk near them, they just ignore you. Like as if i never seen you in my life. You know what I mean? You just shake hand with me and say, peace be with you. Because you and me were baptized into one body. And we should what? Do all that makes for peace to build up a common life. But yet, we don't. We can't. I know we are going to be vulnerable if we want to be one family. You're going to be vulnerable. Okay? You're going to see their pimples closer. You're going to say, Alama, this person actually got a lot of white hair. I tell you, having white hair is a blessing because I can still dye my hair. Having no hair is a different story. Uh. So in one spirit, we stand firm as one family. Now, as we go further down, in one mind striving side by side, meaning we have to work together. How do you strive side by side? You stand side by side. One mind. We think alike. Why do we think alike? What do we think alike? Not the way we dress. We all wear different type of clothing. And I've come to the point that says, don't go and criticize other people what they wear. Because what they like is not what you like. And what you like is not what they like. Whoever tell you that the hair must be black or white? Why cannot be green? Why cannot be pink? I mean, they are green and pink out there, right? I saw a friend of mine who, wear, who wore a shirt, one side longer than the other side. And he paid $200 for it. I said, I have exactly the same shirt. I paid $5 for it. He said, how can you get this? I said, because I went to the shop. They sold defective goods. <laughs> because they, they made uh, one long one shot. But because you tuck in, nobody will know what. So they sold at $5. But he bought it because it's from a fashion shop. <laughs> he paid $200. But is he wrong? No. Nobody say who is right. Because this is a different taste. It's okay. No big deal. 
Now the youngsters like to wear shoes, uh, one red, one green, or different colors. Then you ask him, how come you got different colors? He said, at home I got another pair, same, also different color. Why cannot? That's okay. That has got nothing to do with our one mind. Our one, one mindset is what? We want to love God. We want to follow Jesus. That's your one mindset. And you strive side by side, work together. You can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. St. John's was famous before. I don't know whether it's still now. I don't know. I haven't been trying to find out about St. John's reputation because I was too busy trying to deal with the reputation of Church of True Light, which was not very true in the past. It's quite true now. How he, St. John's was famous for being side by side. The old, the young, the not so... The, no, no, sorry, sorry. The young, the not so young, and the really not so young. All work together. You used to play together. You go to church retreat. Your team must have a older man, an old man, and a young man, and a young child. I don't know if you remember. Every team must have that, and you play together. I still remember in one church retreat, they tried to get Kenneth, your, the Vickers Warden, Kenneth Sung, and myself to jump over. You know, the ladies are very good at this game called Zero Point. I don't know, you know, it's a rubber band thing. And then they go and put on their head like this. And it was quite high, you know. We are old men, how to jump? But the ladies have got a style of jumping. I don't know how they run, they press it down and then cross over. They do it very well. But we all fell down. <laughs> but it's okay. Who cares? We build up a community working together. Side by side. Four, number three, for the faith of the gospel. Side by side. You got me, I got you. We protect each other. We strengthen each other. We hold each other up. Nobody is left alone. Nobody is allowed to walk alone. You will always have somebody guarding you, not to watch, to snoop on you, but to protect you. And likewise, you're protecting somebody. And likewise, you're encouraging each other on the journey of faith. You know, on this journey of faith, you are going to be attacked. A lot of attacked. You'll be terrible, painful. You want to give up. You want to say, in the words of somebody, have a crisis of faith. When Peng Lam's wife gets angry with him, he has a crisis of faith, right? <laughs> Sorry, I have to get you, uh, Peng Lam. <laughs> no, but they use the word crisis of faith. It's not a crisis of faith. Is a brother or a sister falling down with no body holding their hand to hold them and say, let me carry you. Because we are too busy taking care of our unnecessary thing called WhatsApp, called Instagram, TikTok. We're too busy on all those things. I found how terrible TikTok can be. One day, I decided to try it. So, I sat there and watched. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh, good. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the time I said, I better stop, it was three hours later. Because every little short video is about a few minutes. You say, ah, never mind, never mind. Next one, a few minutes only, a few minutes only. Next thing is three hours. And I told myself, no way I'm going to watch it. I, I still watch it. Only when I go to the toilet. No wonder my wife is complaining, why are you in the toilet for so long? If we are busy praying, if we are busy watching out for one another, start by watching out for your spouse, 
watching out for your children, watching out for your household, watching out for your colleagues, watching out for your church members. Start by watching out for one another. Then reach out further. I can tell you, among us, of all those people I know that is in this church before, some of them, we can say that they are going through crisis of faith. It's pain, it painful, it's painful to hear that. Just praying, Lord, how do you want me to help them? How do you want me to go and help them? I sometimes blame myself and ask myself this question. I heard of some incidences. And they try to reach out to me. I say, please go and talk to the present people. I cannot interfere. It's not ethical. It's not, I don't know where ethical is a good word, but it's not very nice for me to interfere because somebody else is in charge. But does it pain me? Yes. Why? Because we ran the journey together. We ran the journey together. But now I don't know how to help them because the thing is, it's been a while. I'm still praying about how to go about it. I want to be there for them again. Because I know when I, I needed them before, they were there for me. Ask a question, my brothers and sisters, were you there for one another? Especially in this walking on the journey of faith. Because it's difficult. The devil will try to hit you and hit you at the most painful place. What matters to you most? And there's the place it will hit you. When we tell people about the gospel, when we tell people about Christ, he will try to hit you on that. The first week that I was in Church of True Light, on a Sunday service, standing at the door, welcome people. One lady walked in, her husband just died during the week and they had funerals and what have you. She came in, her eyes were all teary. She was looking at a pastor, which was me, although she don't know me very well. And I said, okay, in, with the other ushers, we prayed for her. So as a standard priest gesture, I put my hand on her forehead here. Official two inch by two inch that we are allowed to put our hand and pray for that person. So I prayed. That's it. During the week, <laughs> I received an anonymous letter that says, man and woman should be separate, cannot do this. They attacked. I said, okay, fine. I went before the church. I showed them the letter. And they say, if this is your stand, I will abide by it. I will apologize. And henceforth, don't ask me to pray for you. They started looking at each other, trying to find out who is the one who wrote this letter. I say it's an anonymous letter. This person has no guts to write the name. I'm dead. I don't care about it. Because I care about you, brothers and sisters. I will pray for you. We have to be careful, that's right. We have to have that distance between male and female. But what makes you so sure, sure today if I'm with a man, I cannot hanky panky. A very good friend of mine, a very well respected man, he said, eh, no, no, when you ever give a, 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 a lift to a lady 
and there's no other people around, she should sit behind. I say whether she sit behind or sit in front, uh, you are going to be attacked. Whether she sit in front or sit behind, uh, you have nonsense or you have nonsense. You are not doing anything nonsensical, no problem. If you really feel so strongly about it, don't give that person a lift. Just pass the person some money, go and take a taxi. You know, if you know what I mean. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> you will be attacked. But you better be protected. By who? By each other. By each other. We have to watch out for each other. We can sing in church, declare, and, and saying that, I, I really praise God. <laughs> Finally, I, I come to a place where we praise God. And we are not singing those emotional emo songs. God, I'm so sad. I'm crying. Oh, dear. Finally, we are singing songs that are praising God. Thank you. That's why I, I thank uh, Ellie just now. And of course, <laughs> all of you. I must say, that's quite a drama. It's quite good. But it's my very strong feeling and conviction for all of us to strive side by side in one spirit for the faith of Jesus Christ. And may the Lord help us. If I say any more, it's going to be very loud. But let us pray then. And after we pray, we're going to sing, right? No, we sing. We sing one song. No? Musicians can let that. You let choose. You know. After we pray, we're going to sing uh, some, some sort of, uh, what do you call it, response song or whatever. But don't concentrate on the singing. Walk around. Shake each other's hand. And if you don't know the person's name, say, glad to know you. And you are, and now you are family. We are family. Let's be family. St. John Chapel have always been a family. We must be a family. For the faith of Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We ask that your Spirit be with us. May your Holy Spirit come upon us as a church. Yes, Lord, in some areas we may have failed you. We have brothers and sisters who are out there drowning from the problems that they are facing, from their crisis of faith. Lord, we want to pray for them that at this moment your Holy Spirit will lift them that as we lift them up in our, our prayers, Lord, that they see the light and they come back and say, God, help me. And Lord, you hear their prayers. You lift them out of, them out of the mouth. And may they, they be, may they be blessed. Lord, help. We need you. May your Holy Spirit upon each and every one of us strengthen our resolve to break out all walls and treat each other as a beloved family member. Let there be no enmities that exist between us. Should there be any, break it down, Lord. That it be resolved. Help us, Lord. Help us. Your Holy Spirit must be there to help us. For we are powerless and we are weak. And we need you. 
We need you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for this family to be walking on this journey of faith together. You brought us together. We journey together. And Lord, help us to bless one another. We thank you, Lord. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Can